So the Cincinnati Bengals have decided to place the franchise tag on wide receiver T. Higgins, who was ready to hit the free agency market, but that is not going to happen now. T. Higgins is going to stay put in the Cincinnati Bengals franchise as he will be getting paid $21.8 million. That is eighth highest salary for wide receiver in the league. They've got till mid-July to be able to negotiate a long-term contract. The big question is to you, is T. Higgins worth this sort of money? Is he worth a big-time contract? We're going to break down some of his best games of the 2023 season, and I will give my opinion at the end. So let's go ahead and dive right into the tape. So this first one here, he's at the bottom of the screen. He's just going to run a deep dig route, and he's going to find a nice soft spot into the coverage. And what T. Higgins has noticed, like it's jumped out to me on film, he is really good at attacking the ball. He is a big, strong hand receiver. And what I mean by that is he is going to catch the football nine times out of ten with his hands. He's always going to attack it outside the body. This is a great fundamental skill set to have because in the NFL, you're always going to have tight windows. You do not need to allow that ball get to the body, and you're always going to be more consistent when you attack it and you have strong hands. And time and time again, it has shown up on tape. He will attack the football almost every time with his hands. This allows him to be more consistent with his catching and secure a lot of those tight window throws. Now, in this game against the Steelers, what we're watching right now, he had a total of eight catches for 140 yards and a touchdown. This next one right here is a good example of how he has that top-tier speed that can take the top off of a defense. They did this multiple times with him. Just nice, simple slant routes. He catches it, and then he just gets the yak, and he can take off. Something that, I, you know, as I've watched him, I've always known he's a very good, solid receiver, but, you know, the speed really stands out when you watch the film. And he's really good about being able to catch the football and stay in stride. Browning's able to hit him right there in stride, and he's able to get a big-time touchdown from it. This next one is another simple, just deep curl at the top of the screen that T. Higgins is going to play. But it's another example of seeing him attack it with strong hands he's going to get hit right after the catch but because he attacks almost every football he's able to attack it get it close to his body secure it and it's another consistent catch for t higgins i can't stress it enough this is something that has been clear cut on almost all of his routes that i've been able to see he does a really good job of attacking the football and to just piggyback, this next clip is actually an incompletion, but you can see the amount of effort and how he is trying to high point this football. Browning just unfortunately puts this way too far outside, and he has no opportunity to get it down. But I'll freeze it here, high pointing the football, going strong-handed with it right now. This is not one of the areas that you have to be worried about T. Higgins. T. Higgins is going to attack the football, whether it's the highest point or the furthest point away from his chest. That was a great effort, just wasn't able to get his feet down. Just a little bit later in the game, here's a, another example of a deep out route. He's got to go high point the football this time. Browning's able to put it near the body and allows him to get his feet down. Gets a good break, off coverage, snap that deep out route, go attack it, get the feet down, but strong hands with it. As soon as he's got that ball in his mitts, he's bringing it into his body, and it, it just allows him to be consistent, and these defenders have a hard time of getting the ball out of his hands. Really good strong hands. So before we continue to progress into this next game, if you will, guys, hit that like button. It always helps out the video get out there to a larger audience. And if you like anything and everything football, hit that subscribe button and join this community. Help you grow in the knowledge of football. We are going to be breaking down a lot of free agents coming up and a lot of draft prospects and also dive into some more football 101 X's and O's. Now let's get into this. This is a game that he had a very high productive against the Buffalo Bills, had a high volume, nine catches, 110 yards total. Let's go ahead and get right into it. 
just a whip route here. This is when he had Joe Burrow, and he's able to stay with it, but does a very good job. You'll be able to see it from the end zone copy of kind of tippy-toe, catch this ball, tippy-toeing at the, at the sideline, and get up and get yards after the catch. He's a very high-volume yards after catch type of receiver, and he does a good job right there. Now, in just my honest opinion, as I'm going through the tape, he doesn't seem like he's that guy who's going to create a lot of release based off his route running. I don't know if he's the best route runner out there, but he is really good when it comes to yards after the catch, being able to catch the football in stride and make big plays. And that's fine. Maybe not the guy who's going to get open with his release, but he's going to get yards after the catch. But he has to be consistent with how he catches football, and he does a pretty good job of that. Right here is just a high effort type of play that I want to be able to recognize. Just watch him at the top of the screen. He runs a mini dig. He recognizes that Burrow is now flushed out to the right, and he does not slow down at all. This is a good, high-energy effort play, and he gets rewarded with it with the football, and he almost gets rewarded with the touchdown. Too many times in the NFL, you see a guy kind of just give up, quit on the route. Not right here with T. Higgins. That's a really good sign. On this one right here, they're going to motion him from left to right, and he's going to just wheel it up the sidelines because they get off coverage. Burrow's going to throw this one out quick, and T. Higgins does a great job of adjusting his body, attacking it, but then not giving up on the play. Great adjustment here. Put the foot in the ground, make a defender miss, and once again, an example of yards after the catch, which is one of his biggest and best qualities uh, when I'm watching down this film. So get him to motion left to right. So this next one here, T. Higgins, bottom of the screen, just running a simple hitch route. Not a whole lot of separation just because of his route running, but once again, attack the football outside of his body. Too many times you see receivers just let the ball get inside their body. This is when they tend to have more inconsistency issues and dropping the passes. But no, he wants to be strong hands with it almost every time. Attack it. And defenders all over him, and he still cannot get that ball away from the body of T. Higgins. And this is just another example right here. Traffic type of catch, but because he attacks it with outside his body, and I'll freeze it from the end zone copy to be able to let you guys see it a little bit more. This is just something that has constantly stood out watching him on film. Might be tough to tell right here, but his arms are extended away from his body. And if you're a young receiver trying to learn how to play this game and get more consistent at catching the football, it's attack everything outside of your body. You may drop a lot early, but that is the only way that you're going to gain a lot of confidence with your hands. And T. Higgins has that plenty. This next example, just a little bit later in game, he's at the top of the screen, going to run a deep out route. Not a whole lot of separation, but I feel like I'm just kind of beating a dead horse here. But not a whole lot of separation, but just watch how he attacks the football. And there's not a whole lot of drops showing up on the film when I watch T. Higgins. He's got a defender on his back, but because he attacks the football, he's able to get a nice big catch here and a gain of nine. And this substitutes you know, his maybe inability to create a lot of separation with his route running. If he's not going to create a whole lot of separation with his route running, man, you've got to have strong arms and he's strong hands and he's got just that. Quick slant window right here, just like you saw earlier, almost slipped through and uh, released that one for a big touchdown. But Burrow is able to catch him in stride, catch, run. Needs to tuck that ball away a little bit more, but another good high productive play. So now we are into the Baltimore Ravens game. This was at the earlier part of the season. He had 12 catches for 89 yards and two touchdowns. Once again, had a high volume day, and he was able to take a lot of pressure off of like a Jamar Chase. Right here, he is in the slot, just going to run a simple hitch route. Burrow gets the ball out quick, and once again, catching that ball outside of his body helps him to absorb that contact after the throw.
This next one will be a good example of him using his body and getting off a little bit of contact at the top of the screen. He's just running a mini dig. He's able to get this defender off of his body, break off into his route, locate the football, catch, turn, and get yards after the catch. Not much there. He knew that this play was over. Go ahead and slide and get down. But this is a part showing that he's got that body. He can use it and, once again, pick up – a little bit extra yards after the catch. This one kind of lags out, but another in breaking route catches this ball in between four defenders. We'll kind of freeze it in the end zone copy. Great concentration right here by T. Higgins. Joe Burrow is going to place it right where it needs to be. Feel like we talk a lot about quarterbacks being able to fit the ball in tight windows, but there is a lot to be said about a receiver staring down a football with four defenders about to barrel down on him. T. Higgins doesn't lose his concentration and makes the hit count. Catches the football, and yeah, he gets bodied up by about four dudes, but he makes the catch count, and he gets big yardage from it. This is just a little bit later in the drive. Because of that throw, he's able to get rewarded. Quick out route. Burrow is able to put it out there in a vicinity where he's able to use his body, high point the football, and go and get him six points. This next one, he's right here in the slot. Just another quick hitch. Find the open space, get it there. But the quick sense of urgency by T. Higgins to get yards after the catch, to not just settle for what they give you. Catch it, get upfield, don't hesitate. There's no dancing involved right here. It's no nonsense. Catch the football, get as many yards as you can possibly after the catch. Now on this next one here, it's an example of T. Higgins being able to use that big body, that six foot four, 218 pound. He's just going to body up this corner and he's going to base him off. And all this does is allow Joe Burrow to just put it in the front pylon, let Higgins, lets Higgins body his man out and attack the football. You can see it's another great example of once he's bodying him out, bodying him out, like watch how he attacks this football with his hands. That football is away from his body. Great concentration, strong fingertip grab, and it's another six. So now for the question, is T. Higgins worth this high price tag? And I felt like coming into this video, I was going to say no. And there's still a part of me that says, no, not really. I mean, they've got Jamar Chase that they're going to have to pay and things like that. But, I mean, T. Higgins is an incredible compliment to Jamar Chase, and they both feed off of each other. But I'm going to say this. As I watch T. Higgins, there is another guy who just constantly stands out on film for the Cincinnati Bengals. And it's Tyler Boyd. Tyler Boyd has really good stats, very underrated receiver. Like, if it wasn't for a T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd would probably be T. Higgins. So, I think they're going to miss out on losing Tyler Boyd. I don't think they can bring both of these guys out. And I think Tyler Boyd's going to be a really good number two receiver for someone else in the NFL and have to pay less price. And also, you just have to be a little bit concerned with T. Higgins and his injury issues. In just a short amount of time in his career, he's already racked up multiple injuries and he's had to miss a lot of games. That is a tough Tough ask to pay someone that sort of money and not be able to be on the field. So that's just my two cents. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments section below. As always, stay humble, stay kind. Peace.